hello friends welcome back to my channel and today we are back with another exciting tutorial so I'm sure this tutorial will be very interesting for you and the upcoming tutorial based on this concept of infrastructure as code so this is the beginning of a series since we started with the cloud I'm also starting a new series on infrastructure as a code so you know I'm just going to start uh, some basics on IAC today and why it's important in DevOps so uh, whenever we talk about infrastructure as code, uh, there are a lot of tools which we comes up in the mind and but the first one which comes would be Terraform, right? So everybody like talk about Terraform. So this will be, you know, an initial introduction tutorial of infrastructure as code. Then we will be talking more about Terraform and how to use Terraform uh, to use with uh, Azure and AWS, Google Cloud. So we can see about that in the upcoming tutorial, okay? So there are also other tools like Ansible. So you have seen a lot of tutorial uh, about Ansible uh, in my videos itself. And there are also tools like AWS uh, CloudFormation, which is uh, from the Amazon itself. And we have Azure Resource Manager, we have uh, Chef, and we also have other tools called Puppet, Vagrant, uh, SaltStake. So there are different tools, you know, which is a part of infrastructure as code. So it's not just Terraform. And it's not like, you know, it's always uh, has to be done in cloud as well. So we'll see about all those things in the upcoming uh, slides. So before I get into the actual uh, discussion on what is infrastructure as cloud, why we have to use that, why it's important in DevOps, I would request you like if you have not subscribed to my channel, click on the subscribe button, also like my videos, share and comment. Okay, let's now talk about what is infrastructure as a code or, or what is IAC. So you have heard about this a lot of time, right? So what is infrastructure as code? So a simple definition is like infrastructure as code or IAC is the process of configuring and managing the infrastructure uh, through a descriptive model. Okay, so configuring and managing infrastructure means it can be any of your virtual machines or servers or it can be a storage or it can be your network. So it can be anything uh, from part of your infrastructure. So when you set up a data center or, you know, so you want to set up small uh, system. So you need a lot of configuration for that, right? So usually we do have it, you know, you procure a physical server, all those things. So now a lot of things has been virtualized and cloud. So you can do all those things in a descriptive model. So in a simpler way, we, if you uh, describe it again, infrastructure's code is, you know, managing and provisioning of infrastructure through code instead of manual process. So rather than manually procuring these things, uh, you can uh, create things like, you know, you create a, ma a virtual machine manually uh, going through your portal and creating it or through VMware. Rather than doing that, what you can do is you can write down a code, which is a descriptive model of that. So you write down uh, in a sy syntax, like you want this much of memory. This is the model of uh, your virtual machine. Then you just run that code every time when you run it, it's going to create a virtual machine. So that's the concept of infrastructure as code and this is a, have a big uh, impact on your DevOps and you know how you do the complete end-to-end -end, uh, deployment as well. So uh, that's what as I said like infrastructure as code in DevOps so you have to understand how the infrastructure was traditionally managed and now how it is going to be managed. So if you think uh, you know, a couple of years back maybe not a couple of maybe about uh, 10 years back how we will have it? We'll have a lot of uh, physical servers, right? Where we'll have, uh, uh, you know, servers, we'll install application. If you need a memory, you need to add more memories. If you add, want to additionally add another server, you need to order to your vendor. It may take months to come up a new server, then you set up, right? So that's how our uh, previous traditional uh, servers or your infrastructure was managed. And, you know, the reason was there was no much, you know, uh, fluctuation or active or, or request like you need to have a, a increase on server or performance that frequent uh, in those uh, scenarios. Like that's how we have been managing it. So now, you know, in the current scenario, like uh, how the infrastructure is managed now because of the you know, introduction of cloud and more of virtualization, what happened is more, I would say, like more of cloud. What happened is everything is now, uh, you know, frequent and very, you know, uh, happening uh, at the time, right? So if you want something, you immediately build up your server or you have capacity has to be, you know, 
uh, Im immediately done so it's more elastic right and you know scalable so current infrastructure is like that so you don't buy things and you keep it there for a long time you you put up your infrastructure as and when needed so that is why the infrastructure score has uh, got into a big impact because now you know you need uh, something immediately you don't have to manually go and create request and all those things you have a descriptive code available you just run it you have your setup ready so uh, let's a uh, little bit more talk about you know why the infrastructure code the introduction so treating your infrastructure so infrastructure code is like you're treating your infrastructure configuration and provisioning the same way how you treat your application code like you know if you have a source code uh, if you're developing some application what you will do you write down your code right and you put into your github repository you have a version control and if you have want to build you want test so it goes like a workflow right similar way you can uh, think about like now the infrastructure also so infrastructure is more become like a software now not like an hardware so you write down your code you put in your git and you know you uh, put up your version control on that then if somebody want to make some changes you have a version control so and you can run this uh, code so whenever you want uh, you know your infrastructure for provisioning so uh, it's also allow the infrastructure tool also allow you to manage your infrastructure with the configuration file rather than graphical interface right so you that's the basic concept like you don't have to use uh, clicking on the azure portal and you go and create a virtual machine or you create a vpc network so you can write down the code completely you just run it so you have your infrastructure already running azure or aws or google cloud or any cloud vendors or it can be on other docker can you know docker setup it doesn't mean like always it has to be cloud it can be running on a docker containers as well or you know other setup as well so the, there are different uh, ways to do it and you know uh, the also the iac the configuration files are created that contain your infrastructure specification which makes it easier to edit and distribute the configuration so once you have you know your infrastructure as a code the configuration files for your specific uh, specification uh, next time you know if somebody want to do it they don't have to manually do it you just run that code again and it's also easier to edit and distribute like if you somebody else want to use it you just make some changes and you distribute it to others as i said you know you can save it on your git repository or anything so that you can save it you know in your uh, git version control system it, uh, it does not matter like git or any other subversion or any other version control system so these modules can be stored and it can be distributed to others as well so that's the benefit of using you know the uh, infrastructure as code and uh, let's see a simple example so if you see you know infrastructure as code you write down your plan like what do you want to uh, have on your server or like a cloud like or kubernetes you can see some example like a google cloud or aws azure or virtual machine uh, in vmware you write down your code in in a descriptive you know as a template then you apply that would be a plan then you apply it then you know on any of these uh, you know, providers it can be any providers then you come out you know the output would be the requirement you have done so that's how it should be like your infrastructure as code will work okay and uh, uh, when it comes to infrastructure as code, I, as I said, the main terminology we comes to us is the Terraform. And I also want to uh, focus on Terraform because this uh, series I will be starting on Terraform, where we will be using Terraform to create um, a different kind of scenarios, providers. We'll see how we can make use of Terraform in infrastructure as code. Okay. And so the Terraform is the most popular and open source tool for infrastructure automation. So that's why Terraform is more popular and the Terraform is from HashiCorp infrastructure as code tool. So it's an open source and it's from HashiCorp. Okay. And uh, uh, using Terraform, we can define the resources infrastructure, uh, you know, in a human readable format uh, or declarative configuration file, which will help us to manage your infrastructure lifecycle. So it can uh, use it for a complete lifecycle of your infrastructure. Okay, that's what uh, Terraform is uh, more um, famous. And uh, the, some of the benefits of uh, infrastructure is like it can manage on multiple cloud platform. It's not like, you know, on uh, AWS alone. So you have multiple providers you can integrate with Terraform. So you can use Terraform to run it on multiple cloud platform where you can procure or provision your infrastructure. And it's in the human readable format in the code. So you can easily understand the language and help you to write the infrastructure as code very quickly. And also, you know, it's allow you to uh, track your states. 
So whenever there is a change in the resource uh, throughout the deployment, it will allow you to track the changes. So that will also help us uh, using this uh, Terraform. And you can also commit this configuration in the version control that I've been telling like, you know, now this infrastructure has become like a software where you version it using version control, then you have a CICD concept. So, you know, when you create, you build it and then you deploy it and, you know, you'll have the whole uh, thing out uh, in the production. So uh, let's see what are some of the benefits of uh, using infrastructure as code. So one would be like, you know, uh, the cost reduction. So you can, uh, you know, make use of uh, infrastructure as code, which will help us to cost reduction because you don't have to buy the whole infrastructure and keep it ready or you don't have to procure it in there. So what you can do is using infrastructure code, you can easily deploy, you know, whenever you need it. And this also help us to increase our deployment. You don't have to manually go and create your, you know, through GUI or graphical interface, you just run the code. And every time, you know, it's a reusable, we can use it. And it's also reduced the human errors because when you create manually, you can see some errors coming up. But whereas in the, if you want to define the uh, you know, code as in a, a configuration file, then that's going to be saved in Git repository, then, you know, version control, then you can reduce the errors as well. And you also improve the infrastructure consistency because it's going to be the same configuration file now this as i mentioned like uh, definitely you know this isc matters in devops because you know uh, it, it's in, it's become an important part of implement implementing devops practices now uh, and continuous integration delivery why because now you know uh, it's not only like we are not stopping our ci cd uh, just be, uh, in the testing phase or in the staging phase. We are deploying into the production as well. So in those scenarios, now this infrastructure code, we can have it implemented in, your, in our pipeline. So once this is done, it can automatically build up some of servers and we can deploy it. So this uh, majority, you know, this IS, IEC takes away the majority of provisioning work because that's what the main uh, part of, you know, the output or the production works, the provisioning of, of the infrastructure uh, work from developers. So they don't have to manually do it. Uh, so who can execute a script and they can have our infrastructure ready to go. And uh, as I said, now the infrastructure has become like a software component. So it's aligning the development operation team uh, through a DevOps approach. So this will lead us to a few errors, manual deployment and inconsistencies. And also through this CI CD pipeline as an application uh, during the software development. So the whole infrastructure is now become like a software development process where it can go through the CI CD pipeline so it can deploy the application at the end and it can have the whole uh, application. It can be on cloud or any other process. So we'll see more about all these things in the upcoming tutorial. So I wanted to give you a basic introduction about IAC, why IAC is you know, Terraform and what is the benefit of how it matters in DevOps. So this is an informative tutorial, I believe. So I just wanted to share you this information. So uh, I hope it's useful for you. If you, you know, want to see more videos, I would request you like to click on the subscribe button. Also like my videos and share. Uh, thank you for watching.